This is a special News Center 7 presentation from WHIO TV. It just makes me feel a lot better that I've done something. These are the stories of our everyday neighbors doing extraordinary things, making a difference in our community. We love kids, and if they want a meal, we give it to them. Those who listen so others can find hope. We'll, we'll take you in your pain, and then we will help you walk through that. Those who inspire. He's done more for us than anyone can imagine. Because they care that much about helping. I'm fine. How are you? And sharing laughter with a stranger. He's like a kid magnet. <laughs> and he's like a big kid himself when he's around them. To make their day better. Hello. With the light shining bright here at historic Clifton Mill, we want to welcome you. We hope you and your family are having a wonderful holiday season. I'm James Brown, and we welcome you to our annual Making a Difference holiday special here on Channel 7. To give you a little history here on the mill. It opened in 1802. It burned to the ground in 1869. Then, 34 years ago, the owners decided to put up a few lights, about 100,000. Now, there are more than 4.6 million lights. We chose this symbolic location because so many people come here to find the joy in the season and the joy in each other. And the folks we're highlighting bring joy and they bring happiness to people together here in the Miami Valley making a difference without ever expecting any attention. And over the next hour, we're going to share with you stories highlighting wonderful people and organizations. You know, for years I've heard about this special workshop about an hour northwest of here. This time of year, obviously such a happy holiday season for so many of us. But for this couple I ran into, they think about Christmas pretty much all year long. They even gave me one of these as they give them to others as well. Laura is one of those towns that sits a little off the beaten path in Miami County. Most days, it's as quiet as can be. But that's altogether different when you stop off at Jim and Belinda Wright's place. Santa's Elf, where are they? North Pole! Jim's workshop is about 12 feet wide. Around and around and around we go. And 20 feet long. Where my pencil stops, nobody knows. To him, this place is heaven on earth. We're going to drill the holes in this now. The Wrights met on a cruise Christmas Eve, 1990. And both said I do eight months later. And Jim moved here to Ohio. For the last 25 years, they have been quite a team. Ho, 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 merry old soul. But it's fun just to sit and listen and watch the kids. He's like a kid magnet. <laughs> and he's like a big kid himself when he's around them. And what kid does not like toys? I'm making a camel right now. Some years, this handmade toy assembly line gets going as early as June. <laughs> Best Jim and Belinda can guess. They have sanded, decorated, and assembled roughly 10,000 wooden toys and games. From race cars to teddy bears, claws movers, and toys with wood propellers. The toys I make here, that is their Christmas. And you give them something, and they just, boom, they light up like a Christmas tree. Right? While you see a table of toys, that is only the first part of this story. As much as Jim loves making toys, he loves this. Ho, 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 merry old soul. Even more. Santa and Mrs. Claus left their reindeer and sleigh at home and hitched a ride on the Ludlow Falls fire truck. To the fields we go, laughing all the way. <laughs> Down Greenville Avenue they went. <laughs> and off in the distance, what did they see? <laughs> Sixty little ones, as happy as could be. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! For 25 years, they've been handing out toys to little girls and boys in our area and beyond. I just like to see the expressions on their face. And here at the Ludlow Falls Fire Station, Santa and the Misses arose such a clatter 
The kids flew like a flash to make sure they could see Santa's stash. And what to their wondering eyes did appear? The hundreds of toys that took Mr. and Mrs. all year. Now Daniel, now David, now Patricia and Veronica. Reindeer. On Colin and Caitlin and David and Braxton. There you go. Oh, <laughs> that smile gets Santa every time. It's even more fun when you can see him trying to figure out, they look all over the toy, trying to figure out where the battery goes. And that is a whole lot of fun. But you ought to see the adults. I mean, they're a kid all over again. The same could be said for these two as well. It doesn't take a lot to make a kid happy at Christmas or any time of the year. It's just to see that joy. It's just a small wooden toy or what have you, but it's just the joy that it brings. Truth be told, Mr. and Mrs. have not bought each other gifts in years because this is all they ever ask for. I asked Santa what he hopes people watching take away from this making a different story. That's a real hard one. You might, might need to ask Mrs. Claus that question. <laughs> but then I realized all anyone really has to do is look around. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> and that question answered itself. I would hope for the kids, the love of kids, and uh, the joy they bring, the brightness in their face. And th As Santa and Mrs. Claus' time here was through, and Sky 7 flew out of sight, we heard the big man say, Merry Christmas! To all, and to all a good night. Santa told me the price of lumber has doubled during the pandemic, but that's not going to stop him and Mrs. Claus from making those toys for little boys and girls. Michael Hamm was never allowed to call his dad, Dad. His dad was so ashamed of him, at one point, he tried to get his mom to institutionalize Michael. Then at 10 years old, Dad disappeared, never saw him again. He never had that real male role model, but then he and his mom moved to Troy, and two school teachers helped save his life. Uh, how dare you? How, how dare I? From the day he was born in 1990, Michael's arms, legs, and parts of his body never worked quite right. He was never really able to walk. And when he was two years old, his mom, Patricia, got him fitted for his first wheelchair. Well, muscular dystrophy is a, is a progressive, progressive illness. When he was 10, Michael's parents divorced. A couple years later, Patricia and Michael moved from Florida to Troy. And she prayed that I would have mentors or somebody who could, could uh, show me how to be, as she called it, a good man. Michael's first year at Troy Junior High School was eighth grade. When he would crash that wheelchair and all the desks, <laughs> uh, he wasn't a very good driver, still isn't. Gene taught seventh grade, and he never had Michael as a student, but that did not get in Michael's way. Uh, my goal in junior high was to always be wherever Gene was, because I wanted to soak up all the knowledge and love and po positivity he had to give. Early on that year, the two formed a bond. He was just a very articulate young man. He was very confident in himself. Uh, and it kind of, you know, just, you kind of gravitated to the guy from day one. Mm -hmm. So he was special. And when Michael moved across the parking lot to Troy High School, he came across then economics teacher Scott Brewer. Meeting him was a pivotal moment. Because he looked at me and he said, you're Michael, I hear you have a big mouth. <laughs> yeah, because he came in here with a big mouth. And he, uh, you know, he, he would, I'll never forget, sitting at the lunch table and basically telling our head coach at the time where to stick it and, like, not being afraid. To... But Scott told Michael that big mouth of his was a gift. And then he said, how are you going to use that mouth to help other people? Something about that stopped me in my tracks. Scott and Gene helped Michael figure out what he called his how and why in life, his purpose. Michael went on to win a national award for public speaking, and the award still hangs on the classroom wall saying to Gene Steinke, my brother, my hero, much love, Michael.
After high school, Michael went on to graduate from Wright State. He worked and volunteered on numerous community projects. And later, people voted him onto the Troy School Board. Yeah, I remember Scott's words, you know, when you get something that's good, don't keep it for yourself. Give it back. Of course, while talking with Gene and Scott, they were quick to deflect how they have made a difference in Michael's life. He, he talks a lot about how we've changed his life and how what we've done for him, but he's done more for us than anyone can imagine. Michael said these two men saved his life. It's, it's an honor for him to say something like that. As I'm struggling and help me find guidance. To... And to honor them and other teachers in our area and across the country, Michael used his how and why and recently started challenging people just like you. She's the reason I became a nurse. Fast forward 25 years later and now I have the honor of caring for her. To thank the teachers who have made a difference in your lives. Coach Jim Place from Chaminade Julianne changed my my life and is the reason I became a teacher. He wants teachers to know how incredible and how inspirational they have been. Michael's goal is to see a million people post their messages about their teachers. But he does not know if that will all happen in time. Now comes the uncomfortable, heartbreaking part of Michael's making a different story. What is he going through? <sighs> He's going through, um, um, <laughs> He's dying. Um, he, he's dying. Michael needs more and more help with oxygen. He's deteriorating fast. His lung capacity has dropped to just 10%. Yeah, you know, every day is a struggle. Every day is tough for him to get out of bed. Every day, um, he doesn't know if it's going to be his last or not. After Michael's mom passed away in 2016, it left him with no living relatives. Gene and Scott knew right then what they were going to do. He's, he's developed into like a little brother, and so we've, we've adopted him for the most part. But it has been so much more than that. I say the greatest lesson they taught me was about family because Gene Steinke and Scott Brewer are the, are, is everything a young person thought a big bro thinks a big brother should be. Michael, Gene, and Scott know there is no way they can change the next chapter of Michael's story. Sadly, that chapter is coming sooner than later. He's a best friend, and um, you only have so many of those, like I said, and, and to have him to, uh, to have him in my life um, as a friend uh, has meant more to me than, than I can even express in words. For now, words these three brothers can still share in the present. Similar words Michael hopes other people share with all those teachers who made a difference along their own road of life. That I would love these two men, Scott and Gene, with my last heartbeat because of everything that they brought to my life and that it was my duty to make sure that my life was a thank you note of sorts for the time they put into me. We all have uh, our strengths and we all have our weaknesses. Talk about a man who loves volunteering. He cares about everyone who shows up here. The struggles in his own life that have him making a difference. I'm Jay Schmidt, president of the Jeff Schmidt Auto Group. And we are so thrilled that you could join us tonight during this special Making a Difference presentation. This evening, I am excited to share five amazing stories of selfless individuals in our local community who all deserve to be called a hero. Over the last three years, we have given away 13 vehicles to our incredible customers. And earlier this year, we launched our first Jeff's Heroes initiative. With thousands of entries and votes, it was amazing to see all the good happening in our local community. This led us to our first ever winner, Nicole Adkins and her charity, With God's Grace. With God's Grace is a year-round free grocery store that allows people to shop for their basic needs, all free of charge. With over 600,000 meals served this year, Nicole continues to give back to the community in an amazing way. Jeff Schmidt Auto Group is proud to sponsor WHIO's Making a Difference, which has been recognizing heroes in our community for years. Stay tuned to meet our first two incredible nominees coming up at the next break. Welcome back. You know, at times, sometimes the best stories we find are when we're working on a different story 
altogether. This man you're about to meet does not see race. He does not see socioeconomic backgrounds. All he knows is there are people who need help, and he points them in the right direction. Charles Kennedy started out here okay. volunteering once a week. All the way around the horseshoe. But that then turned to two. With Charles, he's the first face they see when they pull in this place. Here along Cincinnati Avenue and Xenia. At some point, you got to give back. Charles pretty much runs the parking lot here at the Xenia Fish Food Pantry. Ma'am, ma'am, I need to have you back that way, and I will direct you how to get out of here. Twice a week, Gail, Charles, and, keep that card. and a team of about 100 volunteers oh, I need two. I need another one. work to get thousands of pounds of free food to Greene County residents. You know, why do you do this? What, what's, what's the incentive? What's the inspiration? I just feel blessed. I had good parents. Uh, they set us on the right path. Fifteen, sixteen. Before COVID. Slow, slow, slow. The pantry was helping about 600 people a month. Now that number is right around 1,200. Well, the big thing is I just want to make sure everybody's safe. Now serving 19, 20. While talking with Charles, I quickly realized just how humble he was, making a difference. And so quick to commend and credit everyone else here. There's some very energetic, very enthusiastic people that work work here. And that's one of the things that kind of inspired me to want to hang around. Charles sees the struggles people face right now. This is his little way of helping. Okay. And providing folks a little encouragement. I'll keep it slow and go around the loop. Earlier in his own life, he faced his own challenges. Well, the first one that comes to mind is when I lost my dad. And a year before that, he was engaged, but the marriage never happened. Charles said he was broken. Things were so tough, he was sure he was not going to make it. You know, we all have uh, our strengths and we all have our weaknesses. A college mentor saw his struggles and cared enough to help give back and get him on the right path. And ever since, Charles has made it his mission to make a difference. I, I wish I could bottle his enthusiasm, his kindness, his optimism. So far, so good. <laughs> right now, the road is not easy for so many folks. Charles thinks God guided him here to the fish food pantry and helped people navigate life's bumps in the road. His cheerfulness means so much to people that are coming here. Another successful parking lot assist. But when they see a smiling face, when they hear a kind voice, it makes it all okay. And Charles and his crew will be right back here next week making a difference. Charles was so grateful for the time we spent with him, but he was very quick to point out the other volunteers there deserve so much more of the credit than he did. They call themselves the Deli Girls, and they started out about three years ago. Their goal that first year was to feed between 50 and 100 kids, but boy, did they underestimate the power of prayer and the power of small town mentality. Making a difference in South Montgomery County. Take a look. We have a chef salad. If you are not from these parts, blink and you might just miss this place. But for folks in Germantown, and we have banana peppers. Some might consider the farmer deli a little slice of heaven. First he comes to see him. <laughs> Kathy Stubbs is the deli's proprietor. Just saying. She jokes how she went from farm girl most of her adult life to small business owner. They give us about 15 minutes and we'll have it ready for you. And at first, her adult children were not so sure about this. But they tease me about my business model here because we give away more probably than some, but <laughs> and then there's volunteer Kim Wharton. So Kathy makes the food for my father's house, and I get the volunteers for my father's house. Kim's daughter helps out in the kitchen as well. My father's house ministry is a faith-based organization where volunteers help get food to people in their community. All right. Anything else for you? Along with running this as a business, the Deli Girls were on a mission to look after the kids around town. We love kids, period, and if they want a meal, we give it to them. In 2019, they saved up some money from deli sales 
to help cover some of the cost. And these two go together. And when word got out about the recipe they were cooking up. And it started with the tip jar. People wanted to leave tips and I wasn't prepared for that. And the rest they could say is history. We can't believe what's happened in the past three years. We're all, we're kind of shocked still. It was just amazing the way the community came forward. Um, you know, we would find wads of 20s in our tip jar that people just anonymously walked in and left. Last year, the deli served more than 10,000 meals to kids. And along the way, the deli started making meals for seniors living in the Germantown and Farmersville areas. We're for our seniors. In 2020, it put together more than 2,000 senior meals. But it would not have been a success had it not been for volunteers like Carol, who helped deliver those meals. To see the joy and gratitude and appreciation, we followed along as Carol made her way to Wanda Hicks' house. We love you. Thank you so much. Hicks is just about ready to celebrate her 89th birthday and was so very grateful. Oh, it looks good today. I'll be eating it today. Hard to argue whether there really is anything better than a good old-fashioned home-cooked meal. There was a couple times when I thought we were going to run out of money, and we never did. Because every day, people, along with businesses and churches here and around the area, believed in the Delhi girls and all their volunteers. It's a love that's ingrained in us and we know each other. We know the struggles, we know the happy times, and we're here for each other. So that's Small Town USA. Interesting how something as simple as a tip jar wound up making such a big difference. It was just a small town at its best. We had so much fun with those ladies. If you stop by for lunch, make sure you leave room for dessert because you will not be disappointed. They're not the fanciest, but they work. When this Kettering woman puts her mind to something, she does it. She came up with a plan to help protect her son and his co-workers from dangerous toxins that can cause cancer. All she needed was persistence and her sewing machine. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back, Dayton. I'm honored to introduce our first finalist of the night, Patricia Cochran. Patricia and her gang of seamstresses have made and donated over 7,000 port accessible shirts for cancer patients all over the map. As someone who is going through chemo and have to go at least every other week, I want to thank Patricia for her kindness and putting together the the zipper t-shirts for when you do go to chemo they work great and they are such a blessing and so is she pat and her six friends got the nickname the gang of seamstresses uh, we put a zipper in from the neckline down to the arms armhole and that unzips and it access it access the support and they don't have to change their clothes so it's very convenient for them something so simple yet so comforting for folks as they face their battle with cancer. 3,000 shirts they have altered, all for cancer patients going through chemotherapy, are all free. All this started when Pat's childhood friend, Red, got cancer. His fight involved doctors putting a port in his chest. Uh, this is my way to honor him. If I get to be 90 years old and can still do this, I will do this in his honor. Next up, meet David Nugent, a Brookville resident who has repaired and given away over 3,000 bikes free of charge to children in the community. Let's take a look at his story and see his passion for making kids smile. I'd like to nominate David Nugent. Uh, he spends his time fixing up used bikes and scooters to give away to children. And I said, there must be something I can do to help. And you know, one of the ministers come by from Plainview. And he was telling me, he said, Dave, I'll tell you what you can do with them little bikes. Because I worked on bicycles. And he said, give them to the church. And he took them to the church and give them away with the commodities. And then uh, the kids just grabbed them up right now. 
it was really, you know, they were surprised. So I did that for a while. So then I started putting them on my front porch, advertising every month and telling them to come get them. And it just got over, it's been overwhelming. I mean, there's a few times I've went in my front yard and I had to stand in my garage because there were so many people. The biggest thing that would touch my heart is making them kids happy. It's because, uh, like I told you, they're our future. And without them, what kind of future are we going to have? I just love what I'm doing. Stay tuned to see our next Jeff's Heroes finalists coming up on the next break. We want to welcome you back to New Center 7's Making a Difference special here on Channel 7, here at the gorgeous, historic Clifton Mill in Greene County. No, we now head to Kettering, where we spoke with a woman who did everything she could to help her husband while he battled cancer. He passed away in 2019, and then during the pandemic, the same woman, she decided she was going to help prevent cancer. And in doing that, she came up with a way to help protect her son and his co-workers. We have likely experienced it. So many channels on TV, but we just can't seem to find anything to watch. I'd say it was about a year ago, Margie was watching a firefighter show on one of those other networks. And the show talked about firefighters getting cancer because they did not have all of the protective gear they needed. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I can do something there to help the local guys. So she was doing something. One of those local guys is her son. He's been a firefighter for 20 years. Ken Collier is a fire captain with Sugar Creek Township. She wanted to feel like she had a purpose and that she was doing something. Ken and mom got to talking and came up with a plan. She was very determined. But then COVID hit and it put her fire equipment fundraising plan on hold. 36. Margie saw people everywhere needed masks. And she was on a mission. They're not the fanciest, but they work. Word spread fast about her mask-making talents. I, I made some for someone in Florida, and they were like, well, how much do I owe you? And I'm like, well, you don't owe me anything. But folks were not having any of that. Can I send you some money? And I thought, well, if you do, I can just donate it to the firefighters. And then I was like, duh. That duh moment inspired her to create a Facebook page. She showed her masks there and let people know they could donate to her cause, but only if they wanted to and if they could afford it. In the very beginning, they put a pattern up for masks. Margie will never forget what happened after she made a few masks with Jeep material and showed them on the Facebook page. And the next morning, I woke up and I had 187 emails. The rest, shall we say, is history. There were times she could not make them fast enough. How many masks do you think you made? I've done over 2,000. And a thousand of those went to EMTs, firefighters, and nurses. In no time, people donated close to $5,000. And that was just about what it was going to cost to make sure every firefighter had one in Sugar Creek. Because this hood has like a 98% rate of getting all the particles out, and most firefighters absorb the carcinogens around their face and head because that's the only open part on their body left. Firefighters wear them under their helmet and oxygen masks. Uh, her, her goal was to, was to get that 50, and she was going to get that 50 one way or another. Now, more than a year later, Margie is still sewing masks. While the requests have slowed, she is keeping her foot firmly on the pedal, and her mind keeps racing. Her new goal... I'm committed. ...get a second set of new firefighter gear here for the 30 firefighters. That's going to cost how much, you think? Over 50. $50,000, yeah, around there. Never did Margie imagine a TV show, cancer, and COVID together would ignite such a flame inside her and wind up making a difference. She's an awesome woman. <laughs> we love her to death. And so do the other 49 men and women firefighters who know, thanks to Margie, they are now better protected for the next time. They have to head out on a fire call. When I met John Hobson earlier this year, he was 93. He's since turned 94. He told me he was just a country boy from Kentucky and moved to Greene County a few years ago so his son could look after him. And never did he think finding a stick in the woods 
would start a movement and make a difference. You know the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words? This one is worth easily ten times that. Remember to push that knife away from me. In January, John and his son Mark invited me to stop by their workshop for a visit. He gets to the laundry once in a while, don't you, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> and just a few minutes in, I realized how lucky I was to sit here and see a father and son compliment and admire each other. Promise me something. I don't want you to cut yourself while we're here. Well, I get to lecture about it every day. <laughs> John knows he did not get into his 90s by just sitting around. He has always needed to keep busy. He likes to tinker. Why do I wiggle? I just kind of do it and uh, enjoy doing it. And never did the Hobson family realize whittling would wind up being for such a good cause. Last year, during the 4th of July, they had some family over, and Mark and John showed them what he had been up to. We've got elm, we've got hickory. His tinkering involved taking old sticks Mark's brother in Kentucky would pick up in the woods. This is birch. And one at a time, John turns them into one-of-a-kind walking sticks. They told the family each would get a free walking stick if they could donate three bucks to the Xenia Fish Food Pantry. I sold about 20 sticks that day, and, and hardly anybody pays three bucks. <laughs> I always donate a little bit more. $150 later, John could have not been more happy, but he still had some sticks which needed good homes. They thought, why not make a sign and put it out along their road? Along with the donation jar, it was well off the beaten path here in Greene County. But they figured it was worth a try. They took this picture of John and put it on Facebook. The Facebook uh, aspect of it went viral. In two days, they got 10,000 views. I had a guy from Cleveland said, I want six of them. Soon, demand was far more than John and Mark could shake a stick at. Back out along the road. One lady left 200 bucks. That same day, I saw a couple come and take two sticks from the basket at the end of the street by the sign, and they left $220. I could not help but wonder why so many people thought they would need a walking stick. Keep you from busting your behind. <laughs> then I might need one of those, right? <laughs> but it turned out to be so much more than that. He's been behind ever since and we don't take you know take orders stick or no stick people kept dropping money into the jar along the road more than four thousand dollars worth john and mark gave it all to the xenia fish food pantry it's not the sticks it's the man his story doing something for somebody else and then there were the people who heard about john and donated more than twenty thousand dollars directly to the pantry's website. For every dollar we get, we can buy five pounds of food. You can't beat that. But they work real hard over there. The Hobson family never knew the food pantry needed so much help. But we're just glad this all came together when it did. The outpouring of generosity has really renewed my faith in mankind. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good people. Mark said he wants people to take away from this story a few things. Remember to look and see who might need a little extra help getting by. It's about the truest statement I could make on him. He just uh, got a, a wonderful heart. And never take for granted, even for a moment, who you are next to on life's journey. I believe he's the kindest uh, man I've ever known. None of us knows just how long our journey will last. He said, my dad is the kindest man I've ever known. You're trying to make me cry. And to think how we might have missed out on John's love, kindness, and compassion had it not been for his desire to tinker. Turns out pretty. And turn some old sticks into works of art and pay for more than 130,000 pounds of food. Making a difference, I'd sure say. The city of Xenia and the fish pantry had John Hobson Day as a way of saying thank you. Check back with the food pantry. And because what John has done 
It's helped the food pantry raise more than $30,000 for food for folks in our community. I went in to wake him up to go to church on Father's Day. He turned over. I couldn't identify. He had been so badly beaten the night before. She's talking about her son. When he was a teenager, he got hooked on drugs. Just how horrible that was inspired her to start cooking homemade meals for police officers. She's still cooking more than 30 years later. Now it's time to meet Chaz Amos, a 19-year-old with a love for Dayton and a passion to revive it. Chaz and his organization, I Love West Dayton, are serving as a beacon of inspiration in the local Dayton community. I love West Dayton. Can I get a hop if you love West Dayton? Organizer Chaz Amos said he came up with the I Love West Dayton cleanup initiative after seeing the social unrest following the death of George Floyd. So if we don't value the community in which we stay in, how can we expect our lives to be valued from the outside looking in? You know, there's trash everywhere, there's abandoned homes. It's just like people are complaining, everybody has something to say, but nobody has actually gone out to do something about it. And we're here because Chad asked the question, and this is the answer. Not judging, not blaming, and that's what this, this project represents. He has brought so many people of different walks together, different ages together, for one cause. So when you see leadership, you know it. We have a workforce development program in the making where high school students are going to be able to get community service hours. He allows himself to be mentored, mentored by a lot of great people in Dayton, and he's allowing himself to be supported and people are following. I'm not the one who made this. This is the community who made this. Because I Love West Dayton is nothing without people participating. What an incredible young man. Our next finalist is Michael Note. As founder of Have a Gay Day, their mission is to create a safe environment for the purpose of equality, education, and support of the LGBTQ community. If you're hungry, if you need something, if you need food, uh, Michael is there. Have a Gay Day is there. They want to help out. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. He really uh, has only one goal in mind, and that is making Montgomery County a better place. He started um, this project with no real money, no real hopes, no real real thoughts. He just knew that he wanted to serve his fellow man and wanted to make life better. The thing is, as an organization, we try to fill in the voids. So if we find a need, we try to fill that need. We're all volunteers. We all work full-time jobs. And then um, we have a lot of great partnerships. So one of the partnerships we have is like with the food bank. Uh, we received a little bit of funding from the Hall Hunger Initiative to be able to purchase a vehicle to make deliveries for people that couldn't make to a food pantry. They are also a pet food pantry. They have a supply of items for babies, diapers, formula, and personal care products as well. It's really about asking the community what they want and hearing the community and then incorporating that into the plan for the future. I would say if there was anything that I wanted someone to know about Have a Gay Day is that we're kind, that we're a judgment-free space. Coming up, meet our last finalist, whose work is changing the lives of countless young women in her community. In all of the Making a Difference stories I've done, this woman quite possibly wins for wanting to talk the most. She's very passionate about her story, passionate about the fact just how difficult and the struggles her son faced when he was younger and could have very well died. But thanks to two police officers, they helped save his life. And she continues to make a difference, saying thank you to law enforcement in our community. <laughs> I need chili powder, salsa. This is one of those stories which quickly became a perfect recipe for disaster. That's two cans of diced tomatoes. Pat Roller loves to cook. Always has since she was a little girl. Growing up on the family farm about an hour southeast of Dayton. Never did she think, even in a million years, it would be her way of saying thank you. About 34 years, I started in Indianapolis. Her way of showing police officers how grateful she was because officers cared enough to save her son's life. Pat and her husband moved to the Indianapolis area for his job. Uh -huh. They thought their own good old-fashioned down-home country upbringing was the perfect recipe for raising their own kids. 
the very beginning of the whole thing was my son had a drug problem. That involved marijuana and alcohol. How bad was it? Uh, it was bad enough that he started uh, stealing money. I went in to wake him up to go to church on Father's Day. He turned over. I couldn't identify him. He had been so badly beaten the night before. Her son owed drug dealers money. One time he disappeared for seven weeks. And uh, I wrote, God just let us find him. She said two police officers were like his guardian angels. They took an interest and gave him their number. And when things would come up, he would call them. They saw something in him and they cared. But because of those officers, the fact they took the time to help, Pat knew just the way to say thank you. She started cooking and baking and would show up at the police department with food. Then she started inviting entire police departments over to her house and they would fill her kitchen and living room. When she and her husband moved back to Miamisburg more than 20 years ago, she went as far as making sure she had the right floor plan as to maximize the number of officers she could feed in her house. While still in Indianapolis, Pat was so angry with how drugs almost killed her son and she decided to fight back. And I would go and watch the parties and I would compile information who was dealing what. Pat worked undercover for investigators, wore hidden microphones to record what she saw and heard to help those investigators catch drug dealers. I went after some people. I supposedly had a contract on me at one point. She did not care. It only further sparked the anger inside her. It was her way of peeling back the layers of anger she had inside. This was about getting even with the people who supplied her son and so many others with drugs. But even to this day, mom and son have never really talked about that dark, painful time in their lives. I keep thinking sometime I want to ask him, you know, do you hate me like you did? Because I didn't know what else to do. And until that day comes, if it comes at all, she will continue what she calls her ministering to police. And later, that is exactly what we found Pat doing, right here at the Miamisburg Police Department. Enough soup and dessert to feed an army. Sour cream. No way any officer here was going to go hungry. When they come and stand in line. I'm fine, how are you? To give me a hug when they're leaving, they got it. Just here in Miamisburg, it's hard to keep track of how many times she has stopped by with food. It's encouraging to have somebody who is so thoughtful. There's a lot of man hours that went into making a soup for 40 plus people. What started out as her fight, her battle against drug dealers, helped ease her own pain. I mean, she's a living example of everyday kindness and little notions that make a big impact on a lot of people. Even Pat admits it's hard to believe she has been cooking and feeding officers all these years. <laughs> Long ago, she stopped counting just how many officers, instead focusing on who will be next. I've got uh, lined up within the next week, Moraine and Centerville. Making a difference, one police officer. It's cream of mushroom. And one police department at a time. The perfect recipe. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? But she's always got a welcome place here at our police department. Why is it Americans love free stuff? We caught up with a man who stole this next idea from someone in Wisconsin. And through art, he and others are making a difference in our community. Bill Cunningham is what you call a folk artist, always eyeing his next creation. Folk art, a lot of it's made out of found objects, found wood, whatever they can find, really. He was six years old when his grandfather... Uh, these are all used caps. ...got him hooked on creativity. It's a nice too, but it's uh, kind of a lengthy process. Here in Dayton, just off East 3rd Street... Bill has filled his studio with some of his art 
and some from other creators. And this process just repeats and repeats. But he and other artists wanted to find a way to share their work with our community. It was, it was an interesting thing. And the idea of it was to give a place for anybody to produce art, literally anybody. And it would give artists exposure, get their name out there. So the, the motto was make art, take art, leave art. And it's free. If they like it, they can just take it. It's basically a gift. So, and it also gives people access to art that may not normally have access to art. Artists, they pride themselves on their own unique, one-of-a-kind creations. We've got some uh, new stuff to install today. But in this particular case, Bill was happy to steal this artistic conception and create the first one of its kind in Dayton in 2019. He calls it the Little Free Art Gallery. And I think it did make a difference. This is the smallest gallery I have ever seen. The first year we put it up did really, really well. He said the gallery gave away more than 600 pieces that first year. It allowed artists, professional and amateur, to put a piece of work in and then not really know where it goes. Like these are some of mine. This came and dropped off last night. But what Bill does know is more than a thousand pieces of art went in and out of the little art gallery in 2020. Now everything in here, uh, if somebody wants a piece of art, they open the door, reach in, take it out, it's theirs. And the value of each piece of free art. And these are probably $20, $30. But then, every once in a while... Yeah, there's a couple artists that dropped off the show in Chelsea, New York. Put a small piece in. It's probably four to 5000 now. This one free art box, shall we say, hit. That's the bullseye. What started as this one box, anchored to the side of this building, boy, did it spread. I mean, art is very much alive. And now there are about a half dozen other boxes, just like this, within a 40-mile radius. And that looks pretty good. To see artwork here one day and gone the next, Bill knows this little art box project is making a difference. And for everyone watching, he hopes a few of you stop by and check out what's going on here. People really like art. This little free art gallery in Dayton is just off East 3rd on Detroit Street. I received a hug from someone in the hallway at school. That random hug changed my trajectory, and I didn't do what I thought I was going to do. That day, Felicia was going to kill herself. After years of pain, she is making a difference, helping others struggling with mental health. The smiles she's helping put on people's faces when her holiday special continues right here on Channel 7. Tonight, we have met some incredible people in the community, all coming together to do good for the city that they love. Patricia Cochran and her gang of seamstresses, David Nugent and his passion of giving back to children, Chaz Amos, whose love for Dayton is inspiring the future, and Michael Note, who is an advocate for spreading love and acceptance for all. And now, it's my honor to present to you our second Jeff's Heroes winner, Connie McAdowney of Rusha, Ohio. Connie and her organization, Rustic Hope, offer free support to young women and single mothers. Let's take a closer look at what makes Connie a Jeff's Hero. I live a totally out of control life. I've learned not to make plans anymore. Like, I don't even like to keep a calendar. It's whatever God brings my way that day, that's what I do. My plans were to just take in some girls into our home. But we also then, people started hearing about what we did. So people started donating stuff to us. So I said to my husband, we need a building. We have to build something so that it's an actual store where single moms can come and get whatever they need. Everyone has a path in life. My path's paved. It has curbs and sidewalks, you know. My parents fed me, clothed me, taught me to work hard. So many of the girls that we help, for them to stay on the right path is so much harder because they can't even find it. She brought Christmas presents to my kids. We were at a homeless shelter and the only people there on Christmas. And she brought us gifts. She showed up with $1,500 and brand new furniture and furnished my whole place. <laughs> like, to come home and, like, all your problems are solved, basically, with your kid. Like, Connie has a heart as big as the moon. She came up with an idea that is opening doors for, for everybody, for all of us who wanted to do something but 
you know, just didn't know how or where. I'm so thankful that God chose me to do this. Life would have been so dull. Congratulations, Connie, on winning a new car in $10,000 cash. We can't wait to see what you will do in 2022. Thank you all for joining us, and we are proud to announce that we will be back for 2022 with more Jeff's heroes and even more incredible stories. The Jeff Schmidt Auto Group is proud to be a part of the Dayton community and to support the people making a difference here every single day. Don't forget to visit JeffDeals.com for all your new and pre-owned vehicle needs. And from all of us here at the Jeff Schmidt Auto Group, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. Stop in to Jeff Schmidt Mazda in Beaver Creek and experience this season of inspiration sales event. Discover all the new models and find your perfect ride this holiday season. And it all starts here at Jeff Schmidt Mazda where your next car could be free. Suicide first brought Carol Greasedorn and me together four years ago. We talked about the death of her brother, Randy. Just saying his name would bring tears to her eyes. This time around, she brought along a friend, and together, they're making a difference. You can feel the love. People can see that there is an ever after. There is light at the end of the tunnel, that you can get through this. There's a saying in life, never judge someone until you've walked a mile in their shoes. So we never know what kind of issues people are dealing with. The burden, the struggles people face can wind up being too much. For Felicia, it started when she was about eight years old. She, her sister, and their mom were in a car crash. My mom had passed away years earlier and I missed her. Uh, that was a lot of it, uh, but couldn't talk about it. And Felicia's emotional downward spiral continued for years. When she was a senior in high school. On that particular case, um, it was death by suffocation with a belt. So you said on that particular case, you, you had planned this more than once? Oh, for sure. I was in the hospital uh, over a holiday week one time, and yes, there were many attempts. But what happened to her that day, what saved her life, was something so simple. Um, I received a hug from someone in the hallway at school. That random hug changed my trajectory, and I didn't do what I thought I was going to do. It helped me to realize I wasn't alone. When I lost my brother nine years ago to suicide, I went into a dark place and it couldn't, I can't describe it other than it was a very dark hole. Before her brother died, Carol did not realize the sort of dark hole he was in. He would give him a ho, 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 and yes, he looked like Santa Claus. Yeah. But inside, he was really hurting. That brings us to the mental health services and peer support Carol and Felicia are so passionate about. They, along with other volunteers, have spent months getting ready for what is called the Out of the Darkness Walk here at Welcome Stadium in Dayton. What we're doing is letting people know that we are out in the community, we're available, and we are going to bring some light love and camaraderie for everybody. The latest numbers from the Centers for Disease Control showed in 2019 almost 48,000 people died by suicide in the U.S. For perspective, that number would fill eight welcome stadiums. The first out of the darkness walk was in 2013, and every year more and more people have taken part. The 2021 walk in mid-October welcomed about a thousand people. And that's why programs like this are important to let people know there's people out there to receive you as you are. Felicia said it's important for people to understand mental illness does not discriminate by age, gender, or skin color. Each bead represents one of the loved ones that we've lost or ourselves. It just brings people together to let them know they're not alone. Felicia said she could not cope with her own mental illness alone, and no one should. That is why she, Carol, and others are here for anyone struggling with the will to keep going. We'll take you in your pain, and then we will help you walk through that, whether it be through resources and providing you opportunity to find those release points that are helpful coping mechanisms. They know because they have walked miles and miles in their own shoes and found a way to walk out of the darkness. We want to shed our light and bring light to others and bring new people on.
After the story first aired on Channel 7 and after the walk, Carol told me there were several new people who came to their next meeting. And she promises she and Felicia and others will continue making a difference. He's a retired police officer, and his passion these days, you will find him at the cemetery, talking to people who died more than 100 years ago. Someday, what he hopes to say to them, our Making a Difference holiday special, will be right back. Life is so much easier when you do business with an organization you can trust, like a Better Business Bureau, accredited business, or charity. Let the good times roll with family and friends at Polking Bowling Centers. Mobility Plus of Dayton, keeping the Miami Valley mobile. When you're frustrated with manufacturing problems, Fastlane Advisors get you solutions fast. As you shop for contractors, service providers, and make decisions, look for the Better Business Bureau seal. I want to welcome you back. The last couple of years, this man has made it his mission to bring a little life back into people who have been dead more than a century. And never did he imagine something as simple as a toothbrush would be making a difference. One thing is certain. I mean, you have to have a lot of patience. There is no missing Dave Watson. Along with his six foot three inch frame. I just set this out of the way for now. He just has one of those voices. This means a lot to me. You might just hear him. And I know I'm going to use these. From the other side of Woodland Cemetery here in Dayton. I just want to get to see what kind I need here first. Dave was a Dayton police officer and retired 18 years ago to take care of his parents. Toothpicks are great too, you know. A couple years back, after his parents passed away. One who had Alzheimer's, the other one had a stroke. He got to thinking. Here, I'm getting rid of some stuff here. He needed a hobby. Just doing that. So here at Woodland, he took a class on how to bring back some life and beauty to those forgotten. These things have been sitting in here for a hundred years. Of the seasons, of the decades. And she died in 1926. And the passing of time. I'm working on uh, mother and father now. Have made it hard to even read some of the names of people laid to rest here. Well, I have a lot of respect for this cemetery. As I said before, everybody has a story. Every headstone he has chosen. I want to do it the right way. I want to gussy him up. Dave estimated he's cleaned easily 30 to 40 headstones. This is somebody's mother, this is somebody's father, but you look at the stones here and you can't read them. So that's my job. As we watch Dave gently scrub, pick, and scrape away Mother Nature's history, he let us in on his secret formula. Here, look at how that's coming out here. You can read this now. Just a little scraping with this and a little more water pressure here. Look at this. Anna's coming back to us now. Good old-fashioned water and a little elbow grease sure did wonders. But Anna getting a little more civilized than she was before when I first got here. As Dave and I sat and talked, he told me Woodland Cemetery has brought him peace. He feels comfortable here. Feels God has given him a purpose. I'd like to think I'm making a difference. But he has never asked to get paid and never will. It just makes me feel a lot better that I, I'm at, I've done something. I matter to somebody, even if there's nobody that knows who I am or what I do. In this lifetime, he has never gone looking for any special recognition. But these people here all lived. They all had lives. But when the day comes and his time here is done... When I go to heaven... And I believe it wholeheartedly that maybe my spirit will run into the spirits of the people that are at rest here now, and their spirits will say, oh, I know you, you're Dave. Thank you for watching after, out after me. I said, well, um, it, it was my pleasure. Until then, Dave said he has a lot more work here. Man, what a mess. So that greeting in heaven will just have to wait.
Look at this. Anna's coming back to us now. Dave says he's going to have to take the winter off because of the weather, but he will be right back at it next spring there at the cemetery. And we know people keep making a difference right here in our community. And we promise you we will keep sharing their stories on Channel 7. We want to thank all the folks here at Clifton Mill for allowing us to be a part of our Making a Difference special. And from all of us here at WHIO-TV, we hope 2022 is your best year yet. And I hope you stay with us. New Center 7 at 6 o'clock is coming your way next.